Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Gyananti Mirandasya Gyananjala Shalakaya Jakshuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Guruvi Namaha so today uh, we wanted to look at the third um, the third chapter and before we do that i wanted to introduce uh, let me just uh, today uh, puna mataji is uh, got her hands completely full uh, she's got a set of twins as we know um, five year olds Five-year-olds are incredibly uh, demanding, challenging. And of course, she has got Shavy, uh, um, who, who I reckon is at least uh, 20. <laughs> Very helpful devotee of the Lord. But uh, she's a little bit tied up today. And um, uh, so we have instead uh, um, uh, Shruti. Now, Shruti is, she teaches the... Um, the Bhagavad Gita verses on Wednesday to, to us. And she's a really extraordinary person. Uh, Shruti, you there? Are you with us? Ah, you're there. Great. Hare Krishna. Fantastic. So um, thank you very much for a short notice agreeing to recite the verses. I just wanted to... <laughs> it's, so, it's so nice to have, have you with us, by the way. It's absolutely amazing. So thank you. And I really enjoy, I have to say, the um, Wednesday evening, because uh, I, I, I know a lot of verses, but she, she's correcting my pronunciation, which I think is uh, very invaluable. So I'd like to, I'd like to just uh, say my thanks to you again and again. <laughs> Thank you as well. I enjoy the sessions on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very good. So, um, now, what I wanted to do, sorry, just a little bit uh, disorganized. Uh, let me just, I just want to get up the, uh, the presentation. Okay. Okay, good. And that's good. Got it. Okay, fantastic. So, um, slideshow. And I'll be able to present it. One second. Yeah, please. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah. let's see. Good. Now, let's have a look. Uh, quick summary of the first two chapters. Uh, in the first chapter, uh, just for devotees who, who may have missed uh, 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 those two sessions, uh, Krishna uh, makes Arjun confront his demons, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, and Arjun feels weakness of heart. Because Arjun asks Krishna, please take my chariot into the middle of the battlefield. And Krishna being Krishna, took it right in front of Bhishma. And Bhishma, of course, is the beloved grandfather of Arjun. And that developed a huge uh, weakness of heart within Arjun. How can I fight the ones I love? So he submitted uh, to the Lord that he cannot fight. And he gave many very good reasons, actually, why he shouldn't fight. And then in the second chapter, uh, which is what we discussed uh, uh, last two weeks, I think. Um, Arjun realized that the problem is much bigger than he can handle. And he immediately surrenders to Krishna. This is also a very important lesson for us. Uh, the problems of life are huge. But when we get help from the Supreme Lord, those problems no longer become huge problems. They become very small issues because the Lord is with us. And he surrendered to the Lord and immediately the Lord takes him from the material platform into the spiritual platform by explaining the difference between the body and the soul. Immediately, 
Krishna didn't waste his time. He immediately said to Arjun that um, all these kings that stand before you and you and myself, we've always existed in the past. We continue to exist now and we'll continue to exist in the future. Why are you lamenting? So he spends 18, 19 verses describing the soul. And then he explains the duty of um, the living entity. Two types of duty. We are living in this world, so we have a, a duty to live in this world nicely. But we also have a sanatan dharma, a duty which is eternal, connected to the soul. We have to do both together. We can't escape from one. We can't say, hey, I ain't going to fulfill my worldly duties. I'm going to go to the forest and chant Hare Krishna. It doesn't work. Because sooner or later, you will do what your nature tells you to do. So what Krishna is saying is, use your nature in my service. In that way, you're doing your duty. And at the same time, you're remembering me. So you do both. Your swadharma, your duty, worldly duty, and your sanatana dharma. And then Krishna also describes the person who does his duty perfectly. And again, Krishna spends about 18 verses describing this. How he sits, how he walks, how he talks. So we wanted to start now on Karma Yoga, the third chapter. Of course, Krishna could have stopped at the second chapter. He had given uh, essentially uh, the full ambit of knowledge to Arjun in the second chapter. But um, Arjun wanted the knowledge to turn into a gyan, a vigyan, wisdom for our benefit. So uh, this is why Arjun asks various questions. And chapter three, it defines the practice of karma yoga, the technique of achieving spiritual connection with, uh, with God through our daily work. And th there's a number of themes in this chapter which we'll talk about, there's four themes. And you'll see these four themes, we will go through each theme. So what I'm proposing, uh, Shruti, is okay. we tackle the themes, um, uh, the first nine verses now, and, okay. and then I will summarize what those verses say. Uh, okay. And then we'll look at the next theme, you do the verses and summarize. So in that way, we'll take each one okay. step okay. by step. So okay. let me share. Uh, so you can now we'd like uh, somebody to read the English. So Shruti will read the Sanskrit and somebody can read the English. Are there any young fellows in this uh, audience today? Who'd like to volunteer? Otherwise, we'll pick on some of the elder, <laughs> <laughs> some of the uh, not so young. <laughs> Okay, so I tell you what, let's speak on calm. <laughs> Only because I can see nine. you, right? <laughs> first nine. No problem, Prabhuji. Yeah, you can do all the first nine. Very good. So, uh, Shruti, please take it away. Okay, so uh, should I uh, uh, recite them without stopping in between the first nine verses? Uh, no, if you uh, recite one verse and then okay. we'll read the English. Okay, uh, okay, so the verse and then the translation. Yeah, so the translation will be read by Kam, and you can do the Sanskrit. Okay, okay. Sure, definitely. Thank you. Okay, Prabhuji. Uh, may I begin then? Yes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Om Shri Paramatmane Namaha Atatriti Yodhyaya Arjuna Uvacha Jaya Sichet Kanmanaste Mata Buddhir Janadana Tatkim Karmani Ghore Mam Neo Jaya Sikeshava Hare Krishna Arjuna said, Oh Janaradana, Oh Kesava. Why do you want to engage me in this ghastly warfare if you think that intelligence is better than fruitive work? Shri Bhagavan. I'm sorry. 
व्यामिश्रेणेवाक्यन बुद्धि मोहय सीव मे तदेक वद निश्चित ये न श्रेयो हमुयाम My intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions. Therefore, please tell me decisively which will be the most beneficial for me. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Loke Smindvividha Nishtha Pura Prokta Maya Nagha ज्ञान योगे न योगे न योगिना सुप्रीम पर्सनलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड सेड ओ सिनलेस अर्जुन आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन दैट देयर आर टू क्लासेस ऑफ मेन हु ट्राई टू रियलाइज द सेल्फ सम आर इंक्लाइन टू अंडरस्टैंड इट बाय एम्पिरिकल फिलोसोफिकल स्पेकुलेशन and others by devotional service na karma nama narambhan na yashkarmyam purushoshnute na cha sanyasana deva siddhim samadhi gachati not by me abstention abstention from work can one achieve freedom from reaction nor by re renunciation alone can one attain perfection nahi kashchit kshanam api jatu tishthatya karma krit karyate hyavash karma sarva prakriti jair gunai every everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature therefore no one can refrain from doing something not even for a moment karmendriyani samyamya ya aste manasa smaran indriyarthan vimudhatma mithyachara sa jate one who one who restrains the senses of action but whose mind dwells on sense objects certainly deludes himself and is called the pretender yes twindriyani manasa niyam yara bhate arjuna karmendriyai on the other hand if a sincere person tries to control control the active senses by the mind and begins karma yoga in in krishna's consciousness without attachment he is by far superior niyatam purukarmatvam perform your prescribed duty for doing so is better than not working one cannot even maintain one's physical body without work yatnya that karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhana tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sanga samachara work done as sacrifice for vishnu has to be performed otherwise work causes bond bondage yep in this material world therefore o son of kunti perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction and in that way you will always remain free from bondage thank you so much wonderful so this is actually a key verse as well and uh, we can just while we are on this verse uh, just very quickly go through it it's 
work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, any work we do, whether it's good or bad, okay, bad work we can understand, we've got to get punished. But what do you mean? Good work also causes bondage? It does, because if our work uh, is just to help people, for example, that's good work. But we will have to enjoy the karmic reactions of that good work. That good work will not take us to the spiritual world. They'll still keep us in this world. Whereas work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu, that work is considered spiritual work. That has no material reaction. The only reaction to spiritual work is you go back to the spiritual world and live there eternally with the Supreme Lord, never to come back in this temporary world. So it's a very interesting verse, this one. Uh, perform your duties for his satisfaction. That way you remain free from bondage. So uh, let's, I'll just share my screen if I can find it. Uh, yeah, okay. So the, this is the overview of the whole third chapter. The th four aspects, the four themes. The first one we've just talked through. We've just heard Krishna being asked a question and he's answered it. Uh, Krishna's being asked by Arjun, hey, I should, you know, tell me what to do, whether I should renounce or whether I should work. And Krishna's giving him uh, a very clear answer. You've got to work. You've got to work, but no ordinary work. Work for me. <laughs> work for my satisfaction. So let's go. And then the other uh, aspects which we will cover uh, shortly. We look at the yoga ladder, very, very interesting. Leading by example, he's explaining about uh, how one should live one's life and be an example to others. And then conquering the enemy. Krishna is identifying, uh, Arjun has asked him to identify what is our biggest problem. So this third chapter is actually very, very instructive for us. Okay. First nine verses, Urchin uh, displays the typical confusion of an immature spiritualist. He thinks spirituality means retirement from active life. He's saying, why are you asking me to fight in this ghastly battle? I should adopt sannyas, give up everything and go to the forest. So often the easiest response in times of difficulty is one of escapism, right? <laughs> we all sort of can identify with that. When we have a tough, tough situation ahead of us, instead of facing it, instead of making the attempt to face it, we run away straight away. And what Krishna is saying is, no, you don't run away. You make the attempt to face the situation. I'm with you. Worldly life entails awkward dealings with monies, possessions, people, career, to name just a few. How can such a lifestyle, lifestyle be compatible with spiritual goals. So we're all entangled, all these things and more. So Krishna explains that true renunciation does not entail abandonment of worldly duties because we will act anyway. We're going to do what is in our nature, whatever we do. Even if we go to a forest, if we're businessmen, we'll be starting to trade. Maybe we start trading with the wild animals, but we'll start to trade with somebody. <laughs> you know what they say about a, a, a Shah, a Vanyo, a Oshwal, you know, he, um, business in, is in his blood. <laughs> if he's in the forest, he'll, he'll trade with the animals. <laughs> but instead, cultivate the mentality that one should act for the Lord's satisfaction. So how does that work? What do we mean by this? How do we act for the Lord's satisfaction? So one way is offering our the results of our activities, uh, that may be money, that may be knowledge, that may be savor, doing something for the Lord, knowing him to be the ultimate enjoyer and the controller. Now that might go a little bit too far because we've just started in this Krishna conscious process. So, hey, you're asking me to give money, you're asking me to uh, spend all my time reading, hey, you're asking me to do some service for the Lord, Oh, it's too much, too much. I can't do any of that. Okay, I agree. Because we're just beginning this path. So when we're beginning, what should we do? We can 
offer our gratitude to the Lord and request him to engage us in his service. This is a key, key lesson to learn from this, this uh, first nine uh, verses that the Lord is saying, you have to act and not just act. You have to work as, uh, do your work as a sacrifice to Vishnu. That is for the beginners, quite a huge ask. So how do we make a start? The first step, thank you, my Lord, everything you've given me. Even the pain I have in my life, I thank you for it. Everything is due to your mercy. You will not do anything uh, which will be detrimental to me. So I thank you, my Lord. Even for the difficult situations I encounter in my life, I thank you, my Lord, because I know you have my welfare at your heart. That's you care about me. Sorry? Well -wisher. You're my well-wisher. Yeah, thank you. And at the same time, we say to him, we ask him, please let me do something for you. Please let me do something. Engage me in your savor. It's a baby step. It's a lovely, lovely baby step. And believe me, when we uh, become grateful to the Lord, even for the difficult challenges in our life, those challenges don't seem so hard. Try it and um, tell me what you think. Experiment. <laughs> Experiment. <laughs> You've got nothing to lose. <laughs> so that's a summary of the first nine. What we will do is, oh, Craigie, we're running out of time. I, would, I will stop at, uh, is it eight o'clock? Hmm. Eight o'clock for 15 minutes for questions. So if you've got any questions, put them on the chat or hold fire and then you'll get an opportunity to ask. So let's go to, um, let's go to the next, how many verses are we talking about? Seven, Seven verses, up to 16. Um, okay. Ankit, yes. Ankit, would you like to read? And then I'd like two Matajis to read as well, huh? Okay, we, uh, you're a little soft. Just give me a second. Sure, sure. In the meantime, uh, Shruti, you can start. That's better. Yes, that's better. Okay, right. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, may I start with the 10th verse? Yes. Yes, yes please. Okay. Sahayatnya praja srishtva purovacha praja patihi anena prasa vishyadvam esha vostvishta kamadhukra In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu, and bless them by saying, Be thou happy by this yagna, because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Devan bhava yata nena te deva bhava yantu vaha parasparam bhava yantaha the demigods, being pleased by sacrifices, will also please you, and thus, by cooperation between men and demigods, prosperity will reign for all. Ishtan bhogan hi vo deva dasyante yatnya bhavita tair dattana pradaya bhyo in charge of the various necessities of life, the demigods, being satisfied by the performance of Yagna, will supply all necessities to you. But he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief. <laughs> The 
The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin. Annad bhavanti bhutani Parjanyad anna sambhavaha Yadnyad bhavati parjanyo all living bodies subsist on food grains, which are produced from rains. Rains are produced by performance of yagna, and yagna is born of prescribed duties. Karma brahmod bhavam vidhi, brahmakshara samud bhavam, tasmat sarvagatam brahma. Nityam yatne pratishtitam. Regulated activities are prescribed in the Vedas, and the Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Consequently, the all pervading transcendence is externally situated in acts of sacrifice. Evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartayati harindha. Agha Yurindriya Ramu Moghampatha Sajivati. My dear Arjun, one who does not follow in human life the cycle of sacrifice thus established by the Vedas certainly leads a life full of sin. Living only for the satisfaction of the senses, such a person lives in vain. Jay, thank you so much. Uh, beautiful Great. reading by both of you. <laughs> Very, very good. I love the Sanskrit reading and um, the English is very good as well for both you and Cam. Key verse here is number 13. Very interesting verse. The worries of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is first offered for sacrifice. We might be thinking, hey, I'm a vegetarian or I'm a vegan. I don't kill animals. So I'm not committing sin. That's not necessarily accurate because even the plants and the fruits maybe not fruits most fruits not they actually are living and when we take a potato perhaps out of the field we'll disturb so much life if we take spinach um, we'll be actually killing some living entity um, so there is a certain amount of sin but this is key food which is first offered for sacrifice, which then the devotee takes, has no sin. That's called pushad. So uh, let's let's look at the summary. Now I think I I'm not going to rush this so much. Uh, we might have to do chapter three over over two sessions. The reason is this part of the Gita is uh, fundamentally important. It describes is the beginning of the yoga ladder, but I'm gonna actually take us through the whole yoga ladder today. There's several rungs to this yoga ladder. On the lowest, uh, or perhaps there's even lower, lower level than this, we'll see, but on a pretty low level, is somebody who's just interested in materialistic enjoyment. They go to work simply to spend the money on cinema and dating and cars and whatever else, alcohol, etc. That's a that's that's a pretty low level as, as an individual. That's just performing uh, crazy activities. One stage higher than that is something called karma kanda, where one still wants to enjoy materialistic enjoyment, but one tries to do it in a regulated way through observing uh, religious uh, ceremonies. Perhaps you, this would in, 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 uh, include somebody who does a sacrifice, does a havan, in order to please one of the devatas, uh, Indra Dev or Ganpati, that please, I am doing this sacrifice for you. Please give me uh, something in return, perhaps, you know, whatever I desire, my, a wife or uh, a car or, or a better uh, situation in my material life. So that's karma kanda. One is still endeavoring for material enjoyment, but 
doing it through a process which is recommended actually in the Vedas if one wants material enjoyment. It's called karma kant. But then there's another stage. When one realizes the futility of material enjoyment, they progress, progress to sakam, karma yoga. So this is the beginning of karma yoga. What is karma yoga? Where one begins to offer a portion of his results, what he's earned. And I'm not just talking about the wealth, I'm talking about knowledge, commitment to God, but still maintain some selfish motive, name and fame perhaps. So this would be somebody who uh, um, builds hospitals. possibly builds hospitals. Um, yeah, somebody who works, earns a living, but is not necessarily fully attached to the earnings, but he may be attached to uh, popularity. He makes a charity of uh, building a house, a hospital, sorry, uh, or feeding people. And in that way, he gets name and fame. So the next stage up from that is Nishkam Karma Yoga. And now Nishkam Karma Yoga is one where one accepts whatever necessities one needs to maintain himself, but offer, offers everything else to God. It's selfless service. This is very, very close to Bhakti Yoga. One is not attached to the fruits, but not just not attached. He offers that fruits to God. So Karma Yoga, there's several different types of karma. Karma yoga can be somebody who's working, but not attached to the results, but God does not come into the picture. But Nishkam karma yoga is where he's not attached to the results, but he's also offering those results to God. That is the highest level of karma yoga, and it's very close to bhakti yoga. Those who progress to this level of spirituality, Nishkam karma yoga, break free from the karmic implications and they become peaceful and liberated. It's a tough place to get to, but uh, it's a place that we, uh, we can aspire for. We will understand that material enjoyment and everything that goes with it is futile. No matter how many mobile phones I have or cars I have or houses or friends I have, <laughs> Actually, I'm not getting any satisfaction from this. Uh, that's a good level of realization. So in that case, let me not be attached to all these possessions that I have. That's karma yoga, beginning of karma yoga. And then the further step, let me become attached to the Supreme Lord. That's a, a very high level of karma yoga, very close to bhakti yoga. Okay, so what's the lesson? How do we practically put this into our life? The first one, we were grateful and asking for service. Second one, that verse 13 is quite critical. Whatever you cook, whatever you make, offer that to the Lord. It becomes prashad, which we can honor, eat. We can enjoy that prashad because that prashad will not bind us to this world. It's spiritual because it's connected with the Lord now. And if we are already offering, we already um, offer our food to God, then we can be a little bit more careful because it's possible to, while we're cooking, to enjoy with our eyes or enjoy with the, the smell, enjoy the smell of what we're cooking. Oh, it smells nice before we've offered it. So we improve our consciousness while we're cooking. And if already uh, offering, we can take it to the next level. Cook what God likes to eat. Tough one. Who knows what God likes to eat? Actually, we do know what God likes to eat because he has many pastimes where he describes foods that he likes. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he loved shark, uh, spinach. spinach. And um, that is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So of course, we can't eat spinach all the time, but uh, at least now and then we make spinach. We, my, we know you, you like it, my dear Lord. So please, please, this is made for you. And if we get into that mood, slowly, 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 our consciousness improves and uh, uh, we will um, 
make progress in our spiritual endeavors. Now, I, I was gonna share the whole gambit. Let's do that. Let's start from the bottom level. We, we, yeah. We've got a few minutes, so let me just do this. What about pizza, Prabhuji? <laughs> <laughs> it's that's the same as shark rockley, isn't it? <laughs> because you've got the tomato sabji and you got the chapati at the bottom. <laughs> and, I like it. <laughs> and if you put a bit of spinach in it, you can say to Chaitanya, hey, you like spinach, so there you go. <laughs> of course, yeah. Hey, Hare Ball, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. I was listening and I'm um, Kamaksha's phone. So. But oh. yeah, also when uh, Krishna is with his coward boyfriends when they're out in the field yes. Yes. looking at the cows, they have picnic and all that, and then describes the kind of, you know, kachoris and yeah. Yeah. those sort of things that they like, you know. So Krishna does describe, yes. you know, the do's and all, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think lasagna yeah. is mentioned in that as well somewhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, you know, I went to um, Hungary. You've been to the Hungary temple, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Shivram Maharaj is there. Um, and, yeah. and on the wall, the beautiful paintings, obviously, you know, the yeah, 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 temple yeah. is amazing. And on the painting, I saw pictures there, you know, and, and there was pastry cakes and <laughs> on the painting and i started thinking i said is this really this is the spiritual world this is depicting the past times obviously and, and <laughs> Vibram Maharaj has written quite a lot of things about in Venu gita and other places you know where in the description but mm. amazingly i saw all these different things and i thought this young guy, whoever painting obviously no krishna likes all this sort of thing you know so amazingly you know we, we don't have to worry, you know, we, as long as it's uh, <laughs> sattvic food, and Krishna will enjoy it. Yeah. And you've got a good point there, because uh, you can be sure if it's on the wall in Hungary, they will have done the research, uh, because they don't do anything by half there, you know, they make sure everything's pick up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. The, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. I thought I would, you know, when, when, when somebody said, what pizza. about pizza? And I, actually, I, I, I did make pizzas tonight, actually. <laughs> Those were them. Funny thing, I, we had the pizza as well. Oh, man. So did I. It's a Friday thing, isn't it? <laughs> Friday thing, you know. No, no, it's not no. usually. Yeah, anyway. Sorry. <laughs> no, wonderful, wonderful carry on anyway. No, yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. So animal life. The bottom of the ladder, right? This is where, um, or, or if somebody is just simply um, eating, sleeping, mating, defending, then that human being is not any different from an animal. What does the animal do? Eat, sleep, mate, defend. What does the human do? Eat, sleep, mate, defend. If that's all we're doing, then we are actually less than the animal. Why are we less? because research has taken place which shows that every single species on this world contributes something to the environment, except the human species. We are the only species, if we were exterminated, extinct. <laughs> or extinct, sorry, yeah. extinct is a nicer word. <laughs> if we were extinct, the environment would benefit. Whereas any of the other animal species, if they're taken out of the equation, the environment gets worse. So if we're not going to do anything for the environment by being present, then we've got to know, understand we've got a higher purpose. And that is on the spiritual level, spiritual platform. So uh, let's not be worse than the animals. Karma, karma yoga, karma kanda, we talked about, which is the fruitive worker, the regulated sense gratification according to scriptures, performing rituals for heavenly sense gratification. According to the Vedas, we would follow the directions of the Vedas to satisfy the various devatas in order to get these material benefits. This is not considered to be something that will elevate us to the spiritual platform, that this will still keep us in this world. The next one, it might take us to heaven for a little bit of time, because we may do some really amazing work here. But when our good karma in heaven is finished, we come back to earth and start again. The next stage is where we start now looking at 
coming out of this material world, karma yoga, where we renounce the fruits and the results of the activities that we perform. Especially if we do nishkam karma yoga, where we bring in the Lord into our uh, lives, then we will start making progress. We will um, go into a devotee family, um, heavens perhaps, but heaven is not necessarily any good. Planets of the Pajapatis, again, we want to avoid these. We want to perform karma yoga to come out of this world. And the way to do that, we would go into the yogi family and from the yogi family, we'd develop more intense karma yoga or bhakti yoga. You can't go to the yoga family. Sorry? You can't go to the yoga family. Yeah. Then the next stage up from karma yoga is jnana yoga, where one not only renounces the fruits, but also starts uh, inquiring about the higher values of life. Here, maybe there's not much jnana at this moment. We're not attached to the results, fair enough. We're offering it to the Lord, fair enough. But we don't really understand who we are, who is God, what is our purpose in life. What Gyan Yog does is it brings us to this level of understanding that we are spirit soul. And it potentially can take us to the Brahman platform. Gyan Yog can also stop at the realization that I am God. Now, that is a huge issue because we are actually not God, we're servants of God. But what Gyan Yog takes us to is the platform that I am as good as God and I am God. So the tendency of one who is a Gyani, Gyan Yogi, is that he has a desire to merge with the Lord. And effectively that means merging with the sunshine of the Lord. Brahman is the sunshine of the Lord. And then the next stage up from that is Astanga Yoga or Dhyan Yoga, where one controls one's mind and senses meditation. by meditation, by physical yoga, by concentrating on the Paramatma within us, the super soul. And that person, he will attain Brahman or Paramatma. But the highest stage is regarded to be Bhakti Yoga. Now, this is not, we are saying this because we're following Bhakti Yoga, but this is actually described in the scriptures. In Krishna, Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, 12th chapter, which is all about Bhakti Yoga. The Bhagavatam, every single chapter, pretty much, or every single canto, really pushes this, drives this home. Bhakti Yoga is the most elevated yoga of all of these yogas. Just like a 50 pound note includes a 20 pound note or a 10 pound note. Bhakti yoga includes dhyana yoga, jnana yoga, karma yoga. What is bhakti yoga? Loving devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Doing seva in love to the Lord, in love with the Lord. And what does one achieve? The Vaikuntha planets or Krishna planets. So there's a direct process where we, we, I, we can go through each one, which is indirect, or we go direct. We take the elevator, take the elevator <laughs> to from wherever we are, maybe here, Karma Khand or Karma Yogi, to go immediately to Bhakti. Whatever we do, we can elevate ourselves to the platform of Bhakti immediately. How do we do that? That's going to be the next section, which we will tackle next week. So I wanted to end there, especially with this yoga ladder. This is giving you a lot more than there is in the third chapter, but it's important to get this into the frame, into the picture early on, because you'll see, we'll see how Bhakti, um, it will. It, it goes through. It, it uh, is uh, encompasses everything basically. If we get this bit right, then 
we will make very fast progress towards uh, self-realization, especially in this age of Kali Yuga. Now, I, I was talking to somebody this morning and uh, really enjoyed the chat. Uh, I don't know if you're there, um, but uh, his mood was very much of in the meditative mood. And that's really good if one can meditate for long periods of time in a peaceful way. That's a great connection to the Lord. But in Kali Yuga, it's very, very hard to focus on one single thing. We'll see this in the sixth chapter where Krishna is telling Arjun the process of Astanga Yoga. And Arjun says to Krishna, impossible, can't do it. So in, if Arjun is saying that, what about what to speak of us? So that's where I wanted to stop. Is, is there anybody who'd like to inquire anything or, or give us uh, give any, any, any realization that you have? The open forum. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, um, so let's say you're born into a yogi family. Um, you can jump through the the, um, the 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 different, I guess, yoga as you as you progress in spiritual life within one life, or you have to go through these stages. Right, that's a good question. There's there's no bhakti can elevate one within this very life. Um, and the example is uh, uh, Ajameel. Uh, if you've come across him in the sixth canto of the Bhagavatam, Ajameel was a Brahmin boy. For the first 18 years of his life, he was really well behaved. But then he came across some really bad company. And he became a thief. He, he married a crazy lady. And he had so many children with her. And uh, when he was uh, 88, 88, I believe, uh, he saw the Yamraj, uh, the uh, Yamadutas come towards him. And they're scary figures, right? Because he had lived a very sinful life. They were come to, yeah, come to snatch him from his deathbed. At that time, he called out to Narayan. His five-year-old son was called Narayan. He called out to his son, Narayan. And the Vishnu Dutas immediately appeared. And they said to um, the Yamadutas, you can't take him. And the Yamadutas were shocked. What do you mean we can't? He's a sinful man. Doesn't matter. He, he spoke the name of Narayan. No, he didn't. He spoke the name of his son. Doesn't matter, the Vishnu Dutas said. He still spoke the name of Narayan. Even the shadow of the name will protect him. Now, Ajamil was listening and he was thinking, wow, this is not good news. It's good news that I come to save me, but they wanted to take me. He changed his mood. He was allowed to live. For the next 12 years, he simply stayed in a place called Haridwar, which you probably know, and he served the Vaishnavas and he attained pure love of Godhead. So um, it is possible in this very life to achieve um, prema bhakti, Krishna prem. There's nothing to stop us except ourselves, especially because we have been given this path by Prabhupada and his books um, are so powerful that they can and will no doubt uh, protect save and take devotees within one life back to the spiritual world. It all depends on us. We don't have to go through this yoga ladder, but we should know the yoga ladder so that we avoid the pitfalls of the yoga ladder. Does that make sense, Sir Anke? Yes, very, very much so. I've, I've heard the, um, the story um, of Ajay Mela and uh, yes, uh, some detail about uh, how he became how I think he lost a, a relationship with his son. And then when he was um, at his deathbed, yes, call, calling out his son's name. Well, I think that was, the, I think the, the, the detail goes that actually um, Narayana, who his son was the most devout and the most spiritual. And he called, um, maybe I'm recalling it incorrectly, but uh, I mm. think that's the detail. But yeah, well, absolutely. I Actually, what I think it was is that he, he had a, he was the youngest. All the others, the, his wife and the other children, they had all abandoned Ajamil. 
current. That's he was it. old man and he's an old man, you know. But this yeah. boy, he was always hanging around uh, uh, Ajamil. And Ajamil was very uh, fond of him, attached. attached to him. And he would often say, Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. So, of course, in that way, slowly, 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 he was getting purified anyway. But yeah. when the Yamadutas came, he started screaming out. <laughs> and he was chanting uh, inoffensively, not offensively at all. And that's why the, the, the Vishnu Dutas came and saved him, you know. Yeah. Very powerful example. Lovely. Thank you for that explanation. No, thank you. I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does. Anybody else? Anything else? Haribo, I'm sorry, uh, Nabi, uh, my usual. It's better to name your children as Krishna's name or Radharani's name. It's worth it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yes, that's why there's a tradition in um, Bharatiya families, generally, like we have Kam, he's given daughter's name Dia. Very, very nice name. Very nice name because we offer Dia to the Lord every day. And he becomes very pleased with Dia. And that's one of the things we'll talk about. In fact, tomorrow we are going to talk about uh, at 3.30 how to offer uh, our food to the Lord. Uh, what's the process? Because we talked about offering as one of the things to, to do in order to get onto this yoga ladder. And Lord Krishna says, in text 13, those who offer their food for sacrifice are released from all things. So tomorrow we're going to go through the mechanism. How do we offer? Um, and it's, it's something that uh, Prabhupada has taught. Uh, our Guru Maharaj has taught us. Um, there's another request in the uh, near future or whenever time permits. If you can show uh, how one must chant according to the way Prabhupada's taught the ISKCON devotees. Yeah. Yes, that's good thinking. Maybe we can do that on Sunday. Let's have a, let's have a think about that one. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Kamash. Anybody else? Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. We're missing you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, even I am missing it. It's, uh, it's a shame I had to miss it. <laughs> Uh, may I may I share a very amusing? Sorry, God. Shruti Sorry. was amazing, though, huh? Shruti. Uh, Shruti is always amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's always melod. I mean, uh, you know, very sweet and uh, very soft to hear. You know, very nice. Yeah. I just love to listen to her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Prabhuji, yeah. While we were discussing, I was. <laughs> yeah, Shruti, you are always so good. You know, you're amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You are very kind. <laughs> Uh, while I was listening to, you know, your discourse, Prabhuji, about, uh, you know, karma kanda and, uh, you know, the give and take relationship that uh, sometimes a devotee establishes with God, you do this for me and I give this to you, the yeah. material. Uh, yeah. So I have a very uh, amusing incident to share, if you permit. Okay, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, when I was uh, a young girl, maybe 14-ish, 15-ish, you know, I, there was, you know, uh, in my town, there was a very uh, hype spiritual discourse, you know, by a great learned saint. And I dragged on that, you know, to attend that discourse. Of course, the, she was not very delighted or pleased to take me. She had many other things to look after. And uh, I could see the fear in her that, you know, I'm, become, I'm going to become a sannyasi or something like that. <laughs> uh, well, those fears apart, she still, I dragged her, she took me. And uh, while, when we reached there, you know, the, there was a hole, uh, he was, uh, you know, in, uh, invited at one of the devotees' houses and the hall was of uh, elderly men. And I was the only girl and with my mom, the only woman. So, you know, they were like, oh, we have a young girl here. She has a, you know, uh, uh, let's give her an opportunity first. Let her, let her uh, ask the question. And I just told him, I said, is God corrupt? And, uh, you know, that shook the entire, uh, you know, um, what we can say, gathering that was there. And uh, I mean, obviously it gave me instant fame and all. I don't remember the answer after that because they were, you know, praising, oh my God, this question, that question. But I didn't get my answer. And the reason for that question was yeah. that if I wanted as a student, you know, if I would pray to him, I pray to Lord, okay, I'll offer one lamp. 
you know give me these many marks so <laughs> at that point in time maths was a sticky issue for me so he didn't give me you know 70% instead he gave me only some little some less than that which i was not very proud of so <laughs> i felt okay even if even if i'm offering that why am i not getting what i want in lieu of that yeah i think <laughs> so so you know as a naive young person you know you just feel that i mean even though because everywhere you see people have you know i don't uh, in hindi we call it as mannat you know we give a different name or um, uh, in gujarati we call it as manta that you know if god does this for me i'm going to offer this to him mm. uh, like you know a barter system kind of a thing of course uh, <laughs> i've got my answer now and uh, i just wanted to share that you know it doesn't work that way uh, you mm. know i mean especially with the young people those who are you know listening it might help them and even if you know sometimes you do it you know for materialistic gains mm. uh, i have realized you know it is not much fun reaping the fruits out of it mm. and sometimes when krishna chooses you know his way rather than ours Mm. at that point in time we might not be very happy with the way mm-hmm. things would have moved yeah. you know yeah but it is always like you know a tall person will have more visibility of what's going yeah. on everywhere rather than a shorter one yeah so <laughs> he being on top of the world you know he yeah. knows everything and he he plays or he arranges incidents accordingly but that to my little brain at that time i i mean i couldn't think much or uh, you know we didn't have such lovely ga- uh, gatherings you know that frequently so <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah but uh, it reminded me of you know that funny incident but i have my answer now and uh, uh, again you also touched upon that so it yeah. reminded me of that yeah no thank you for sharing that actually very very important point even if devotees have some material desires you want something it's understandable because we're living in the material world right it is understandable even if we have material desires ask krishna don't ask the devatas because the devatas they may give they may not give whatever but what krishna will do he also may give may not give but what he will do though such devotees approach the lord with material motives the lord saves them from their desires by his special mercy this is the point with krishna true 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 he you, you know we we devoted to him we care for him we love him so okay we still may have some material desires because hey we're living in this world yeah i got a son to marry i got a daughter to marry krishna come on <laughs> um <clears throat> ask him because he will destroy that material desire through his special mercy for his devotee he will deal with it he will take care of it he will only give if it's if he sees this will help my devotee come closer to me so even if one has material desires approach krishna approach the lord <clears throat> the devatas <clears throat> what they give is temporary and limited and those who worship the devatas go to the planets of the devatas they still live in this material world they're still very selfish they're still very entangled in this world although they're great servants of the lord no doubt about it i'm not mocking them because they do a great service for the lord but they're still materialistically minded they're not going to save you from getting out of this world they're not going to be able to take you out but krishna can and through his special mercy he protects his devotees <clears throat> yes thank you prabhu ji no thank you thank you punam thank you for sharing that a really nice past time is he corrupt <laughs> now i would say to that answer of course i would say definitely corrupt right <laughs> he says himself that he is uh, impartial he he says that i am not partial to anybody but we know krishna is very partial to his devotees but also krishna is impartial because anybody can become his devotee this is the beauty of the lord nobody is barred if you look at the past time of ramachandra he didn't look at wealth he didn't look at uh, your family status he didn't look at um, you can cook very nicely he had monkeys 
as his devotees, right? He looked at simply the bhakti. So this is the beauty of the Lord. True, true. Thank you, Prabhuji, for a lovely answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now I can see, you know, Shevi has, is coming up slowly, you know, she's going to come with a question. Yes. That, you know, when you, when you talk about, you know, impartial or partiality, mm. and she has realized that, you know, even if, you know, for in her language, you know, a, a demon or a person who does bad deeds is a baddie. So <laughs> that is how she likes to put it. So she's like, so mommy, even if a baddie says just Lord's name in the last time of his life, God, I mean, Krishna comes and grants his wishes. How is that fair? <laughs> 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 so... Yeah. Yeah, it hasn't uh, come out that way, but I have seen the question mark on her face. But <laughs> any time that question is going to come, <laughs> maybe it, it might come to you, Prabhuji. Yeah, I think meetings. it's already come. Yeah, it's already come. She's already <laughs> asked. Uh, I think she already asked last Sunday, last Saturday, <laughs> last Sunday. Yeah, she asked. But no, it, it's 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 a fair point as well. You know, this is the this is the causeless mercy of the Lord. He, the, you can't put God in a formula. And you work through the formula and the answer is going to come out. No, his mercy is completely causeless. He doesn't need any reason to give for his mercy. This is the beauty of the Lord. Um, so, you know, we may work very, very hard, yet we may not see the Lord's mercy. We can't force him to be merciful to us. But one thing is, that's why we always have Radha next to Krishna. Because when we work hard, Radha Nadi notices. And when she says to Krishna, he's working hard. Krishna's got no choice. His compassion has to flow. So this is our guarantee, Radha Rani. She's our guarantee. Krishna's mercy will flow because we will, we will try to please with Srimati Radha Rani. True, true. <clears throat> Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Uh, come, have you got any questions? Anything that you like to say or ask? No, thank you, Prabhuji. That was very clear. And um, um, I mean, for me, it was just really about um, from where I personally am of, of the stepping mm. stone to be able to get to that, get to those, get to that level. Yes. Um, I'm still in my my early educational path, um, so um, I'll be here all day for all the questions I have. So I'm, I'm just um, observing and learning as I go and trying to piece all the bits of information that I'm gathering, my own knowledge, the the readings that I do to try and build that picture um, and and have a greater appreciation of um, how uh, how it all fits together, really. Um, Brilliant. You're in a great place, actually, because you've got this inquisitive mind. And um, this is such an amazing philosophy. You will, you when you die, you're diving into it. You you will love it. It's so good. So amazing. Yeah. I, I'm I mean, learning all the time. It was, it was a good, um, um, good, good learning today. And um, it was well structured. So thank um, you. Yeah. No, thank you. We only managed half, but uh, I think sometimes we just, uh, we did half the chapter. We'll do the next half, uh, other half next time, next week. Uh, but sometimes it's better to just, rather than rush through it, just talk through it uh, slowly. Focus. Yeah, it was more focused and um, the conversation has helped as well. So thank you, yeah. Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Sonia, do you have a I'm question? Oh, okay. oh, no, Sonia was there. Sonia? Okay. No, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank it was it was really interesting and very, very good session. And thank you for everything, Prabhuji and Mataji. Thank you for encouraging us. Yeah. <laughs> We're okay. just servants, uh, your servants, actually. And actually, um, anytime you have questions and a whole list of questions, we can do, uh, you know, like a, a session just of questions. Happy sure. to do Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mara Krishna. Thank you. Um, uh, Prabhuji, I just, no, I was just going to say that uh, although we only got half, through half of it, I think it's, uh, 
great that we can spend the weekend and the rest of the week pondering on those thoughts um, and, and um, uh, you know, trying to, to apply them to our yeah. daily life yeah. and then come back to the next part. You know, it's, uh, mm. it's great to have Krishna in small doses as well. Um, yeah. Because, like I said, um, although, you know, in one dose, I think, yeah, that, you know, that's the end goal really, isn't it? But uh, yeah. no, um, no, no, you're right. You're right. It's, Otherwise, uh, too much, yeah. and we can't take anything in. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's uh, yeah, and and with the with the uh, Sanskrit slokas, which were beautifully chanted, uh, you know, it was really um, it's it's uh, it's a blessing to be able to speak or sing the words as um, as Mataji did, um, just as the Lord would have done. So yeah, that no, was it was really uh, really nice. Yeah, no, that's mm-hmm. very true. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I second that uh, that small doses is easy to digest. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. So, just I wanted to ask the audience, what were the two takeaways, uh, the two sort of lessons from the two themes? Can anybody share, if you don't mind? Make sure you offer pizza to Lord Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> That's the first one. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Won't forget that one. Uh, what was the first one? Anybody remember? Um, I think for me, it was that uh, in every action, there's a reaction. Um, and uh, some of the things we do in the material world have uh, material reactions, but when we offer everything to Krishna, then mm. there is no reaction. And, and that's the state we want to get to, I guess, where we are um, not expecting. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, it goes in that, um, I guess that uh, goes on your tally. Yeah. Uh, your car, um, yeah, spiritual tally rather than your material. Brilliant, actually. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. Well done. That's really good. Mm. Really, really good. And even if, say, we can't uh, get onto that, like, uh, you know, to, to oh, do right. all of our actions on the spiritual platform, because that's quite an ask, you know, we, let's learn to be grateful. If we're grateful to the Lord for everything he's giving us um, and request him, please let me do something for you. You do so much for me. Let me do something for you. That's a really, really great first step. Gratitude. The uh, problem with this world is we just become so uh, hard-hearted. We, we were never grateful. So gratitude is such an important thing. Okay. Uh, if there's no more questions. Actually, I think we're supposed to go to 8.15, you know. I'll have to review our timetable. We, we, I keep forgetting. <laughs> so I apologize if... Uh, oh, sorry. Hemant? Do you have a question, Hemant? Hello, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I, I just want to give my respect to you. Uh, I'm from Mauritius. I came oh. to your temple a couple of times. Okay. And I'm Shama Maridi brother. I just want to say Hare Krishna. You are whose brother? Shama uh, Who is my brother? Sharmila. Oh. Wow. My initiated name is Shama Malini. Oh, oh, Shama Malini. Ah, very okay. nice. Thank you very much, Shama Malini. I didn't know that. Shama yeah. Malini. Nice. <laughs> and Hemant is in Mauritius. No, no, I'm here. I'm in England. Oh, yeah. from Mauritius. Fantastic. Thank you for joining yeah. and uh, really mm. appreciate. Uh, I, I already appreciate the lecture. It was very interesting. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. And this is actually all the blessings of Guru Maharaj in Srila Prabhupada. Without Prabhupada, we, we're nothing, you know. We're nothing anyway, but uh, Prabhupada is putting some value, you know. <laughs> yes, can we do one thing, if devotees are ha- okay. Um, we'd like to pray. Tomorrow we're doing a prayer service for Anjali Mataji, wonderful devotee who passed away. Uh, she really was one of the sweetest really one of the sweetest persons uh, I've, I've known in my life. Um, she would be in so much pain, but never, mm. never complained, but always, always smiling, smiling, but blessing, you know, mm. the blessings. 
so she's she's left her body but she's gone to a great place uh i've got absolutely no doubt in my mind that she will be fast on her way to krishna but we always want to um pray for her because she was always praying for us so just wanted to pray to lord nishinga there um oh shruti thank i'd like to thank you uh if if anybody would like to go please um don't feel shy uh, i i know everybody has busy schedules and i'd like to thank shruti for taking time out and joining us i really enjoyed your uh the sanskrit yes, it's very very special <laughs> so you don't know how special you are <laughs> <laughs> The Lord is very kind, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of you for uh, sparing your time. Hope, mm -hmm. hope it was useful. Um, and I certainly appreciate you, you sparing your time like this for us. Okay, so we can chant to Lord Nishingadev, uh, half man, half lion incarnation of the Lord. We just do it once. And for everybody who's not well, for example, we have um, Chandrakant, Nita and Kalyan, uh, who are the Chandrakan is a cousin, first cousin of um, Arvind. Arvind. We want to pray for his good health, you know. And Manoranjan, Kiran, Atri, Sharmila, Shyama, was it Shyam? Malini. Shyam Malini, Vikash, Jean, Ketan, and Jitubai. So, Namaste Narasimhaya Pala de la de daini Iranya kashi kubashaya Shila tankane kaya ali Ito nasingo parato nasingo Yato yato yamita to nasingo Pahe nasingo Vidahe nasingo Nasinga marin Chana prapade Tavata rekamala bare Nakam abhuta shringa Dalita hiranye kashipu Tanu bringa Kishavadrita narahari rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jayanashingali, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Renuka. Uh, thank you, Aruna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare thank Krishna, you, Kaushalya. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you, Indulekha Maji, Yogi. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Amazing. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Aruna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Really nice. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh, Hare Krishna, Surinder, you didn't contribute anything today. <laughs> it was all spiritually nourishing. I appreciate it a lot. No, Thanks thank you. for the, the blessing, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Surinder.